So when I was a kid, I used to take drum lessons. The reason I took drum lessons was because back when I was a little kid, I would tap on everything. And it's a habit that still persists to this day. I'm like the hand-boning champion of all time. But my mom got sick of my constant tapping and decided to uh, have me take drum lessons. She's like, clearly you're a percussionist. This is something that just is in your head. You should do this. And on the surface, I liked the idea. I was like, yeah, drums are cool. I like music. So I would go every Wednesday after school to uh, a place in my town called the Music Nook. And I, I think they're gone now. But they, they, they did private one-on-one -on -one lessons. And so I would go there and learn the drums. The interesting thing was that every Wednesday, I loathed the idea of having to go to the Music Nook. And I loathed it because there were other things I wanted to do. I wanted to go home and play video games. Uh, I wanted to go you know, play Magic or Dungeons and Dragons with my friends. I was a super fucking nerd. Uh, or just... Or just relaxing and watching tv there were other things that i was more interested in doing than going and playing the drums i had no say in the matter at that point my mom was paying for these lessons she was like no you're fucking going so even though the most interesting thing to me about going to drum lessons was going next door beforehand and spending the lunch money that i should have spent on food on getting some cards of magic from the game shop next door I would have to go and do drum lessons, even though I wasn't really interested in it, or I wasn't enthused in it going in. But the interesting thing was, is after I went in and started the lesson, I was really into it. I liked playing drums. It was, it was, it was the hand boning given some structure. It was great. I loved it. It was the starting that was the hardest part. And this feeling never went away for as long as I took drum lessons. And the unfortunate thing is eventually it overcame my passion of actually being there. The, the disdain for wanting to start and the discomfort and the, the dis inability to look forward to it, I eventually just stopped going to drum lessons entirely. I just told my mom, yeah, I'm not really interested in it. Even though I was interested in learning to play the drums. And it's something I regret to this day because, again, I still tap on everything. And I'd love to have like an actual productive outlet for that kind of tendency because I hear rhythm and stuff everywhere. It was just that, that discomfort, that fear, that just lack of wanting to actually start something. That was the hardest thing. And I think that's pervasive in everything we do. I think that's where laziness comes from. You know, it's like turning the ignition on a car. It takes the most energy to start the engine. But once it's going, it kind of doesn't take, it. you know, it idles. And it doesn't take as much energy to keep it idling as it does to actually spark it and get the thing going and it's the same thing with our willpower it takes more effort exponentially more effort to actually start doing something than it does to actually continue the action once we've going because this happens with me with drawing and writing and and anything that i'm doing i just my mind always when i decide to do something is filled with like no don't do it it sucks you don't like it it'll be dumb and it just like bombards me instantly with things and reasons why i shouldn't do it but if I can push through that like initial wall and start, I'll end up kind of enjoying myself. Like, yeah, drawing's cool. Yeah, writing's cool. And it's like my perceptions of these ideas and concepts that I enjoy are being poisoned by this laziness and self-doubt that manifests just in the beginning of things. Because once I'm in the mode of it, it's great. So my kind of idea and my message is that push through that. That's not real. That's just your mind being stupid. You know, it's funny because I had this video on my list of things to cover probably since I started this channel. And the reason I never got to it was because I was like, eh, I don't know. This is kind of a little bit heady thing. Uh, I don't know if it really has any grounding in reality. And maybe it's just me. But then, on a complete whim, I ran into a book that talked about this exact concept. And it was great because as, as great as this idea is of pushing through that initial wall... I had no idea how to explain how to actually do it, like an action step to make it happen. I knew like the few times when I was actually able to conjure up the willpower and push through it, it was good, but I had no idea how to actively control it, how to do it. But I found this book randomly on Audible because I've spent hundreds of dollars on audiobooks on Audible because uh, I have a subscription there. And I found this book. And it talked exactly about it. I had no idea that's what the book was going to talk about. It just seemed like an interesting title. It was recommended based off, because I read a bunch of like business books and self-help books and things like that, because I'm, I'm all about being the best person you can be and stuff like that. Um, 
It's called the five second rule by Mel Robbins. And it's totally exactly what I'm talking about. And the basic idea of the book, and it goes into a ton of detail and it's really great. I totally recommend you guys check it out if you have the chance. Um, is that whenever we do something, it's the initial idea. And then the, it's, it's your brain immediately is just like, no, 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 don't do it. And when she said that it, it clicked because that's exactly how my brain works constantly. It's always that initial idea of yes, followed by a huge, massive onslaught of reasons to know, to not do it. And that's how my brain works. And nine times out of 10, that's the side that wins. And the idea of the book is that what you need to do is count backwards from five, five, four, three, two, one, and then do it. Get up and move, physically move somehow and get started on it. You know, even if it's like I'm sitting here at my desk, I need to start drawing. I can pick up my hands, put them back on the keyboard and mouse and start doing it. By, by the counting, I suppose, the, the logic behind it is the counting interrupts the mindset that you're having that's kind of dissuading you. It resets your brain. It engages your something part of your brain. I don't fucking remember. I'm not smart. And then the physical action pushes you into a different kind of perspective and then you go. And I read this book or listened to this book a couple days ago. And already I'm using it here and there and it's working. It's actualizing and letting me take control of that idea that I just talked about of how you have to kind of like climb over that initial hill of, of effort and then the rest of it kind of just goes because this is things you care about. You know, I want to write, I want to draw, I want to do these things, I want to get up on time. You know, simple things like that. And it totally worked. So actually, I have a link I'll put in the description of my like, you know, the Audible affiliate link that all these fucking YouTubers use. Um, if you want to check out the book, you just sign up for a trial, then you can get it for free. Because you can get any one book you want for free, and you can keep it even after the trial expires and stuff. So, uh, if you don't want to, to, to buy it, you don't want to give me money for my Audible trial, I know, I'm sure everybody has probably already done Audible trials, with like Don, John Tron and everybody else. I'll have a link to, to like the physical paperback in the, the description. Um, but I definitely recommend it. I kind of just summed up a lot of what the book talks about, but it goes into a lot more detail on how to actualize it in different areas, which is pretty cool. I really liked it. I There are a ton of books I've thought about recommending on this channel, but this is the first one that was just so simple and so easy to actually implement because there are a lot of books I've read on self-help that have like five to 10 steps of things you need to do and it takes like months to kind of like really train your brain into it. This was instant. Like I could apply it the second I found out about it. And that's what's really cool about it. That's why I'm really recommending it here because you can do this today, which is crazy. So moral of the story, the initial like hurdle of getting started is the hardest part. And once you can get over that, you're golden. You know, it's not going to be easy, but you, you're, you're in the game and you're moving. And once you're kind of in the trenches doing things, things get easier. And the five second rule, five, four, three, two, one, go, really helps kind of get started and giving you control over that ability to push through that initial kind of barrier. So I'm Tom Oliver. This is Rebel Pixels. Remind you guys, we might be indie, but that doesn't mean that we're alone. Catch you on the next one.